Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and the Xena 750 Super Duty build. Today is a day I'm going to pull the engine off the airplane so I can work on those rear baffles. And I'm also gonna screw around with my nose gear. Well, the first thing I did in preparation to get this engine off is I disconnected the throttle and the mixture cables and I removed the carburetor. And I took the carburetor off just in case I have to set this down. I still have the big formed foam block that the engine came in in the crate. So if I have to set it down for any reason, it'll fit inside that foam without the carburetor on it. Hopefully the oil cooler won't be in the way. So I'm hoping I have enough room here with the cruiser wing, but the next thing I need to do is uh, take off the, I guess take off all the nuts and bolts or hook this thing up first, take off the nuts and bolts and this engine will be ready to yank off, hopefully fit those baffles and put her back on. Now, one of the things I wanna do is see if, uh, when we used this last time, we had weights we put on the back of this, you know, just in case if the engine's too heavy, you don't want the thing to tip forward because this thing gets extended pretty far. So I'm 200 pounds and I don't know what the engine is, 250 maybe. So it looks like that'll just be fine right there. And I can, Crank this thing up now. And I do have to be kind of careful because I don't know if you can tell, but the cruiser wing here is pretty close. I wish I had a, another hanger to put the cruiser in for a little while. All I want to do now is just get this thing kind of lined up and not really lift, not really lifting the engine because I don't have any of the nuts and bolts off yet, but at least it's kind of ready to go there. Well guys, welcome to my world. This is why it takes so long for me to build this airplane. Everything's ready to go. The bottom bolts are out. I still have the two top bolts in, but all the nuts are removed. The engine's basically ready to just move away from the engine mount, but I don't want to do it myself because I want a couple hands on here stabilizing it while somebody pulls the whole, you know, the whole assembly back. And now since I'm by myself here, all I can do is wait until other people have time to come over and help. Could be today, could be tomorrow. It could be next week. Who knows? This is why it takes forever to get anything done. So I guess I'll start looking for something else to do. All right, the engine is now off. I can work on getting these baffles mounted to the back. That was the whole issue here is I just couldn't get in here to trim the baffles and fit them with it up next to the engine mount. And you can see my remote oil filter. What I've done is I've just taken this off of the back of the engine because I figured it was easier to unscrew this and disconnect this than to disconnect the oil hoses. So once I put the engine back on, I can just bolt that back on. So here we are guys, I can finally get these baffles done and then uh, get this engine installed permanently. Now there's one other thing I need to do while I have this engine off and that is fix this here. If you notice there's a space between this block and the gear leg, these, these tubes here should be touching this block. 
So what I need to do is adjust these uh, rubber, rubber donuts up here because with the weight on here, it's pushing this down. And what it's doing is because there's a space here, it's lowering the nose of the airplane, which puts the propeller closer to the ground. And this is about, with the engine on here, this is a, there's about a good half inch space between here. And with a half inch of space in here, that's going to lower the nose, which puts the propeller closer to the ground, which I don't want in a bush plane. So I want to remove this gear and slide all of these collars up so that it basically raises the fuselage up to where it should be. Now, in order to remove this, I need to disconnect both of my steering linkages. I need to remove these two bolts and I'm going to need to remove the safety wire for these bolts because this whole assembly has to come out. Kind of a hassle to do, but better to do now than later. Now with the weight off the nose, you can see there's a space in there. And one of the things that concerns me a little bit, I guess, is that wasn't there when I initially built this. So I don't know if maybe with the weight of the engine, these collars are sliding down, which shouldn't happen, but I'm not sure. So we'll take this all off, rebuild it, and hopefully it will work. Now the first thing I'm actually going to do here before I do anything is just put a piece of tape here just as a reference before I take anything apart. I just want to know where these are located on here now. So everything should come up about a half of an inch. And these collars are pretty tight on here so I don't think these slid down. I'm not sure what the issue is. Maybe these things just compressed over time because of weight. But we'll loosen these up, we'll move everything up. So what I'm doing for each of these is I just slide each one up. This top one here now is about a half an inch up. So now we'll just try to, oh boy, that's hard to do. Try to grab each one just like that. And we'll just keep going down the line until they're all moved up and then I'll move these collars up. Now, one of the things I want to do before I redo all this is I wanted to look in the plans and you can see they have those two steel collars and it'll be hard for you to see, but there's actually a, one of these, uh, it's not a, it, right here. It's one of these metal discs on top of that. And then they're saying 290 millimeters to the top of the, the gear leg. Now I'd sure like to know how they're measuring that because if I put this on top of the disc, on top of the two collars where I have them now, I'm at 250 millimeter, here it moved. I'm at 250 millimeters to the top of the gear. If I do 290, if I put 290 at the top of the gear, this collar right here should be right here, which would be dragging the propeller through the ground. Like that doesn't even make sense at all that it's 290 millimeters from here. This would be down here, like this ring right here all this would be moved down about that much. So that, I think that measurement in the plans is completely wrong. This one here seems to be stuck on there. So I might need to persuade it to come off. 
And I think what I'm also going to do is put Loctite on these screws. I didn't put Loctite on there before, but I'll do that when I rebuild it. Well, that was a massively difficult job. The gear is back on. The only thing I have to do is safety wire these two, or these four bolts on the bottom here. The tire is on, the nut, there's a new cotter pin down there. This is so difficult to do because if you make this too tight, you can't get this block in here to slide the gear in. If you make it too loose, well then you end up with a, a space down here. I don't know. It's just, it is what it is. That's all I could say. It's massively hard to do. It's more difficult than it should be. There's gotta be a better system to that. And the other thing I'm wondering too is, why are there so many of these pucks? Like my Mooney on the main gear had four. Maybe it was five, I think it was four. And that airplane weighs like three times what this airplane weighs. Like, do we really need like all these discs on here? All right, I'm done. I'm gonna end this video here because now with this done, I need to figure out what else I can work on and what else I should do. And that'll be the next video. Well, thanks for watching guys. We'll see you later.